Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how I've created all the FXs in my latest animation. I will show you how I've created the speed lines, the smears, the trace effect, the dust impact, and the impact frames. This animation was created for the Anim Challenge of May in partnership with Agora Community, Riot Games, and as the final chapter of my upcoming animation course live. If you've missed the previous teasers, I will put the link in the description below. At the time I'm releasing this current video, I've made it to the top 10 of the challenge, and we will soon know if I've made it to the top 3. Enough talking, let's get started. First, let's have a look to the current animation. Before we jump into the FXs, I just want to show you that I've worked first on a mock-up of the environment. I've just blocked cubes and ground shapes so that I have point of reference whenever I was animating the camera. Once I figured the style of environment I wanted for this shot, I've modeled those simple stones shape. Those are a simple circle that I have extruded into horns shape. Then I've placed them to guide the eye and create nice compositions. I've then added subdivision modifiers to those mountains. I've added a simple cube that bind the whole scene with a volumetric shader. And both the ground and mountains are using a simple noise texture that is projected onto their surface. I've also created a custom world shader with a couple of animated noise texture and gradients. If you'd like a tutorial about this, just let me know in the comment. Indeed, while the environment was important, I also needed a character to be animated. So let me introduce you Trident. He's a mix of Spider-Man, Green Lantern and a lot of iconic superheroes. This is one of the rigs that are gonna be provided with the course. I will share with you time lapses of this character creation in upcoming videos on the channel, so stay tuned. Let's jump into the FXs with first the background speed lines. A lot of people asked me if there were any 2D effects and everything was done directly in Blender using shaders and simple shapes. There is no 2D nor grease pencil. The first speed lines are just a simple plane, as everything was rendered in Eevee. You get a proper transparent shader. Don't forget to set the blend mode to alpha clip or alpha blend in the material settings. As explained before, the model is a simple one face plane, and the base of this shader is a simple noise texture. I'm using the UV coordinates, and to get the texture stretched, I have a first mapping node with the X scale reduced to 0.2. Then this noise texture goes through two color ramp. Both have a constant interpolation, so that we get solid color and no gradient. The black and white gradient is used for the transparency of those speed lines and is used as a factor to mix a transparent shader and an emission shader. While the second gradient is used to set color to the emission shader using the same color range as the background. Here is a screenshot of the node setup. Just capture it so that you can reproduce this effect. Then I've just animated the color ramp that drives the transparency by inputting a keyframe on the white position value of this gradient, and I've also animated its Y position to make the speed lines flow in the background. I have used exactly the same method during the charge, but instead of using a background plane, I've used a cone shape. The only difference with the previous plane is that it has a geometry input nodes that allow me to output the Z position of the cone or its altitude that I have multiplied with our noise texture. This way I can change the color between the sky color and the ground color based on this value. 
This way the speed lines better blend with the overall environment. Then I've added a multiply node just before the factor input of the mix shader so that I can change the opacity of the effect. Here is a screen capture of the node setup if you want to reproduce it. To create those magical trays, it's a very similar effect as for the different smears in the video. Let's first have a quick look to the shader. Let's consider the current mesh as a simple plane. I'm using two mapping nodes to drive two gradient texture. Both mapping nodes are using UV coordinates, and both mapping nodes are using the type texture for their coordinates. The lower mapping node has no other modifications. It drives a gradient texture set to linear. This gives us a gradient from the beginning of the tray to its tip. The second mapping node drives a gradient set to quadratic sphere, and this gradient is offset so that it's centered toward the tip of the plane. Both gradients are plugged into color ramp so that we can play with their contrast and are mixed together with a mix RGB node set to multiply. Then we have a second texture coordinate node using the UV coordinates to drive a simple noise texture. This noise texture is mixed with our gradient using a simple mix RGB node. Using the factor, we can use whether we favorize the gradient or the noise. In this case, with a value beneath 0.5, I'm favoring the gradient. Finally, all of this is inputted into a map range that allow us to fine tweak the contrast. The result is plugged into three different color ramp. The first one is here to drive the transparency of our effect. It's plugged into the factor of the mix shader of the transparent and emission shaders. The second one is to set the color of our effect. So it is plugged into the color input of the emission shader, while the third is used to drive the strength of the emission shader and is multiplied by a value using a simple math node. The higher the value, the brighter the emission shader. Again, here I provide you a capture of the whole node setup so that you can copy it if you want. The secret trick about this effect is to use it onto curves. So both those traits are simple Bezier curves. So to make you the demonstration, I will add a simple Bezier curve and I will go into edit mode to give it a random shape for the sake of this demonstration. Then to apply it the same material, I will select the current curve, make the other curve active and press Ctrl L and choose material. Nothing happens yet because we have no geometry. Under the geometry properties of the curve properties, just increase the extrude. Now our curve is shaped as a rebound. We've automatically generated UV coordinates. The little trick is then to animate the start and end mapping of the curve that will allow us to shorten it from head to tip along its path. And our UVs will automatically adapt to the current geometry of the curve. So in the end, what I did was simply to model those curves along the path of the two flying swords and then input a keyframe on both factor start and end of the start and end mapping of the curves. And I then just set the value I wanted on each frames. Honestly, this take me like five minutes. Note that in edit mode, you can change the size of the curve by pressing Alt S to scale up or down the thickness of the rebound. And you can also press Ctrl T to tilt or twist the shape of your curve. Another little tip to make your life easier, you can reduce the resolution of the curve by reducing its resolution value into the shape panel. And then add a subdivision modifier to your curve to make it smooth. It's easier than increasing its original resolution. So this is the method I've used to create all the trails, but also to create the smears on the trident and the large sword. I've just tweaked the intensity and the opacity of the shader. To create the first impact of the trident, 
I have used the same shader as for the curves, applied to a few planes that I have simply animated, getting out of the ground. But instead of playing on the transparency of the shader, I've just reduced the output of the mapping node and it creates a dissolve effect. Another thing I did to emphasize the impact and increase the readability of the landing of the character is to add a plane in the background with a simple gradient. It allowed me to create a flashing effect, but note that I've kept it while the character was landing. Because the background was too high contrast and we were losing the silhouette of the character if I didn't let this effect enabled. This is why I've chosen to dissipate it a little after the character hit the ground. I have used the same method to create the bigger impact of the large sword on the ground. You may have noticed secondary small impacts whenever the character is grabbing his swords or whenever the trident is hitting the ground at the very end. These FXs are very interesting because I'm using a technique that is very common to video games and that I've also used to create the dust impact when the character is landing. The shader is almost the same as usual, but I'm using slightly softer gradient to get a smoother effect. To explain you the FX, I will simply add a plane and apply to it the same material. It's a simple spherical gradient that is moved along the coordinates of the plane. As usual, I'm using the UV coordinates to drive a first linear gradient texture. This gradient is plugged into a color ramp that allow me to get a black gradient on top and bottom of the plane. The second gradient is a quadratic sphere and I have animated the Y location of this gradient. The first mapping node is here to allow me to center the gradient in the plane. If I mute it, you can see that by default, the quadratic sphere is offset on the side. Then, as usual, I go through different color ramps that will allow me to contrast everything. I will mix this round gradient texture with the linear gradient texture and I will use the result to drive the color of the effect but also the opacity of the effect. Now to get the stretching and damping effect upon this texture, it's not a matter of playing with the coordinates but we are going to cheat with the UVs of our plane. With the plane selected, I will enter edit mode, then open the UV editor and see that our plane has UVs. We can scale on the x-axis the plane, it won't change the UVs. We can also make it slightly stretched by moving those points upward. Changing the size of the plane doesn't change its UV coordinate. I will press Ctrl R and add the loop cut. Again, it won't change its UVs, but we will see this new cut in the middle of the UVs. I will add a second loop cut in between on the top part and now look at what happens whenever I offset those loop cut in the UV editor. As I make the upper face larger on the UV editor, the shape gets less stretched onto the geometry and when we will use the shader to make it slide on the surface, it will appear that it slides at a lower speed. So basically the texture is moving at the same speed on the UVs, but since we have a larger UV space for this part of the mesh, it seems that the shape is moving slower. So I can fine tweak my UVs to get even more contrast and then I can duplicate the plane to create more branches to the impact. Once I'm done with the shape, I've simply animated the Y location. And this is a very common and cheap method used in game engines to create dumping effect for dust, water, or those sparkles. Before we go ahead, a little ad. This tutorial is sponsored by myself. If you want to learn all my rigging technique or if you want to create stylized character from scratch, you will find all you need on my Gumroad page. Use the code P2Design and get 10% on whatever product you want.
If we now have a look to the dust effect, we can see that it's very similar to what we have just done with the small impacts. But instead of using simple planes, I'm using some kind of cup shape. On the upper part of those shapes, the UVs are relaxed, so that we have a pretty regular noise shape, while I've let very small room for the UVs of the pace of this cup shape so that the noise is super stretched. Then I'm using the same technique, I've just keyframed the position of the gradient along those UVs, and we get this nice dust puff effect on the impact. Creating the impact frames was part of the post-processing, but I will show you how to create them in Blender in a few seconds. I just wanted to show you that in After Effects, I've just added a curve to slightly boost the brightness, add a photo filter to warm a bit the picture, and add a vignette effect. Then to create the impact frame, I've simply turned the pictures to black and white and use labels and inverse whenever it was necessary. You create this effect in Blender, it's super easy. You just need to open the compositor and the image editor just to have a preview of what you are doing. I've rendered the animation as an image sequence so I can browse my file to open the image I want to switch to this black and white frame. In the image editor, I will switch to viewer node as what I want to see. And in the compositor, I will activate use nodes. Now I can add an input image and search for my picture and control shift left click it with the node wrangler add-on installed. And now to create the same effect as in After Effects, we just need to use a color ramp. So I will press shift A, add a color ramp and put it in between my output and my picture. Then you just have to switch the interpolation to constant and move the white and black flag until you reach the result you want and if you inverse the black and white flag you just get an inverse node for free and this is how you can create this kind of frame very easily there are a couple of other features we haven't covered the emission factor and the dissolve effect are part of the rig features of the character they are shader driven and I will cover the creation of those features later on when I show you how I created the character. It's super basic. Another thing you can't see on the animation is that those textures are animated. I've also used some particles whenever I'm dissolving the weapons. Since Eevee can't use the lifetime to dissolve particles, I have used a distance-based solution. Finally, the sword slash are simple planes that used the same shader as on the curve for the trace. I just animated the value of those slashes. I can't cover everything in detail that will be way too long, but if you want a tutorial on one of these specific FXs, just let me know in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one very soon.